Assalamualaikum and very good uh, day to all of you. So today we will proceed with our current business on the non-seismic method, which is the final or the last method, which is the electromagnetic methods. So for today's topic, we try to address the CLO4, which is to perform and process electromagnetic survey slash data. By the end of the day, by the end of this lecture, students should be able to explain the fundamental of TEM method and uh, process and interpret uh, the TEM method or EM method in general. So just a bit recap of what we have learned so far starting from the electrical methods. As we go through, we understand that the reason some of the geophysicists do not consider electromagnetic method as a part of electrical methods, unlike resistivity, IP and SP, they are applying that are applying the DC currents. Electromagnetic method is using alternating current, the AC. That is number one. Number two, the range of frequency used in EM or GPR is relatively higher, about uh, hundred times higher than the other. Uh, electrical methods and lastly uh, the source used in the EM uh, is electromagnetic field itself rather than current and potential difference or resistivity uh, in resistivity itself IP and also SP a little bit introductions on electromagnetic methods EMs so EM surveying methods are types of geophysical survey that use the response of the ground to the propagations of EM field to map subsurface structures and properties. The response of the ground to EM field varies according to the conductive of the ground. This is because the conductivity of the ground determines how easily an EM field can penetrate the ground and how much current will be induced in the ground. EM measurement use alternating magnetic fields to induce uh, measurable uh, currents in the earth. The induced current then creates its own magnetic field which can be measured at the surface. The strength and shape of the induced magnetic field depends on the conductivity of the grounds. So the diagram here is an electromagnetic wave propagation. The wave is traveling from the left to the right and is composed of two oscillating fields, the electrical field and magnetic field. The electrical field is represented by the blue arrow, sorry, the blue arrow, and the magnetic field is represented by the red arrow. The electric fields and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other and they are also perpendicular to the directions of propagations of the wave. The electrical fields um, and the magnetic field are oscillating at the same frequency and they are in phase which is, uh, with, with, with each other. This means that uh, they reach their maximum values at the same time. For example, at this point and at this point, even the wavelength is also equivalent. The energy of electromagnetic wave is carried by the electric field and magnetic fields and the energy of a wave is proportional to the square of the amplitudes of the electrical fields and the magnetic field. A bit on fundamental of electromagnetic fields. Electromagnetic survey methods are based on two fundamental principles, Faraday's law and also Ampere's law. The Ampere's law can be explained uh, in this uh, simple illustration, which states that the magnetic field around a current carrying a wire is proportional to the current flowing through the wire. The directions of the magnetic field around a current carrying wire is determined by the right hand rule. If you curl your right hand around the wire with your thumb pointing in the directions of the current, the finger of your hand will point in the directions of the magnetic field. So the diagram below shows the schematic uh, diagram of uh, Faraday law of induction. Faraday law states that the electromagnetic force EM field or EMF is induced in the conductor whenever there is a change in the magnetic flux linkage with the conductor. In this image, uh, the wire is moving through the magnetic field. As the wire moves in the directions of the thumb, uh, the magnetic flux linkage with the wire changes. These changes in magnetic flux linkage uh, induce an EM, uh, EM force in the wire. The EMF cause a current to flow in the wire through the directions pointed by the middle finger. This picture shows an ammeter uh, that connected to a coil of wire end to end. An experiment using a magnetic bar to see the reactions of the induced current is done by moving 
the, the, the magnetic bar in and out of the coil. The A situations, a current is induced when the magnetic is moved toward a coil, momentarily increasing the magnetic field through the coil. The induced current in B is opposite when the magnetic or magnetic bar is moved away from the coil, move to downward to, from this direction and move to the negative value of current. In C, no current is induced if the magnetic or the magnetic bar does not move relative to the coil. It is relative motion that count here. The magnetic or the magnetic bar can be held steady and the coil move which also induce an electromagnetic force. The diagram on the right shows uh, the schematic of the EM surveying method on how the EM field is applied for geophysical explorations. EM field can be generated by passing an alternating current through uh, either a small coil comprising many turns of wires or a large loop of wire. Uh, second, the alternating uh, primary field travel from the transmitter coil to the receiver coil via pass both above and below the surface. So number three, uh, in the presence of conducting body or conductive layer, the magnetic component of EM field penetrate the ground induce alternating current AC or eddy current to flow in the inside the conductor. And four, the eddy current generates their own alternating secondary EM field which travel the receiver. And five, both the primary and secondary fields are detected by the receiver. And lastly, uh, difference between TX, I mean the transmitters and the RX, the receiver fields, reveal the presence of the conductor and provide information on its geometry and electrical properties. By the end, we will uh, subtract between the primary and the secondary fields because we know the primary uh, fields that have been uh, produced and uh, we can identify the secondary fields from the uh, the, the, the combinations of this primary and secondary fields. So secondary fields is equivalent to primary fields or produce fields minus the primary field in general. So we're going to talk about uh, apparent conductivity uh, AC in uh, electromagnetic EM and this apparent conductivity EM is a measure of the ability of the material to conduct electricity. It is defined as the inverse of apparent resistivity. The unit of apparent conductivity are Simon per meter or S over meter. Like apparent resistivity in the resistivity methods, uh, the apparent conductivity is, is a product of the ratio between the secondary magnetic field and also uh, recorded by the receiver coil over the primary magnetic fields uh, at the receiver coil. And everything is depending on the variability of the frequency of EM wave in Hertz, permeability of free space, and the distance between the TX and RX in meter. So this variability needs to be considered from case to case if there is any changes during the survey. But the main point is what is explained earlier, which is the ratio between the secondary and primary magnetic field. The graph here shows uh, the skin depth of a conductor. This is very important because the skin depth is the depth at which the current density has decreased to 1 over epsilon of its value at the surface or in general around 0.3679 or in roughly 37%. So the skin depth is important because it's measure on of how deeply an electromagnetic wave can penetrate a conductor in the other term is depth of penetrations. So it depends on the how good the conductivity uh, of the subsurface. So the skin depth is inversely proportional to the square root uh, of the conductivity of the conductor and the frequency of electromagnetic wave. This means that the skin depth is smaller for conductor with high conductivity and for electromagnetic wave with high frequency. The image uh, shows that the skin depth decreases as the frequency of the electromagnetic wave increases. This is because the higher the frequency, the more energy the electromagnetic wave, electromagnetic wave has and the more easily it can penetrate the conductor. 
the image also or the, the graph also shows that the skin depth decreases as the conductor, conductivity of the conductor increases. This is because the more conductive material is, the easier it is for electrons to move through material and the less energy the electromagnetic wave need to penetrate the material. Uh, the table here shows uh, the skin depth for certain rocks or material at various frequency. For example, if you take a look on here, the skin depth of igneous at 1 megahertz <coughs> uh, is uh, about 121 meter. This means that an electromagnetic wave with a frequency of 1 megahertz can only penetrate about 121 meter into any igneous conductor before the current density decreases to 1 over epsilon or 37% of its value at the surface or the initial, uh, the initial amplitude. In electromagnetic methods, EM survey can be classified based on domain and also source. For the domain system, it can categorize based on time domain, TDEM, and frequency domain, FDEM. For the source system, it can be categorized based on passive and active source. The time domain electromagnetic TDEM and frequency domain electromagnetic FDEM methods are two types of geophysical methods that use electromagnetic field to map subsurface structures and properties. TDEM method involve the generations of transient electromagnetic field, which is then measured at various locations. The measured data is used to calculate the electric, electrical conductivity and magnetic permeability of the subsurface. Uh, while frequency domain electromagnetic <coughs> involve uh, the generations of sinusoidal electromagnetic field, which is then measured at various frequency. The measured data is used to calculate the electrical conductivity and magnetic permeability of the subsurface as a function of frequency. TDM method are also more sensitive to change in electrical conductivity than uh, FDEM method. Then, then we move into the source. Uh, passive <coughs> electromagnetic PEM method used naturally occurring electromagnetic field to map subsurface structure and properties. These methods are typically used to map deeper subsurface structure such as mineral cluster structure and bedrock in regional study. We also have active electromagnetic method. So AEM or ele active electromagnetic method uh, artificial generated electromagnetic field to map subsurface uh, structures and properties. These methods are typically used to map shallow subsurface structure such as aquifer, minerals, uh, deposit and buried utilities. So we're going to discuss all these methods in the next part which is uh, the type of electromagnetic methods. Now we move into field procedures and operations like resistivity survey. EAM also has three types of survey scheme, sounding, profiling and also tomography. Now let's take a look on the EM sounding first. The goal is to estimate conductivity structures as a function of depth in one place. The goal of electromagnetic sounding is to estimate the conductivity structures of the subsurface as a function of depth. So this can be done by measuring the response of the subsurface to an electromagnetic field as a function of depth. Achieve by increasing the spacing between the transmitting and receiving antennas and keep the center point between the TX and RX antennas fixed. The depth of penetrations uh, of uh, an electromagnetic field depends on the spacing between the transmitting and receiving antennas. The greater the spacing between the antennas, the deeper the field will penetrate. In electromagnetic sounding, the spacing between the antennas is increased in order to map the conductivity structures of the subsurface at different depths. Depth of penetration increase with distant uh, uh, antennas. As mentioned before, the depth of uh, penetration of an electromagnetic field depends on the spacing uh, between the transmitting and receiving antennas or coil. The greater the spacing between the coil, the deeper the field will penetrate. This is because the electromagnetic field will attenuate as it propagates through the subsurface. The attenuation of the field is greater for shorter wavelength which means that the field will penetrate less deeply 
for shorter spacing between antennas. Data plotted as apparent conductivity uh, versus uh, antenna spacing. The data collected from an uh, electromagnetic profiling survey is typically plotted as apparent conductivity versus antenna spacing. Okay, like what we have done in the um, vertical electrical sounding, if you remember. Apparent conductivity is a measure of the conductivity of the subsurface that is affected by the depth of penetrations of the electromagnetic field. The, the apparent conductivity will increase with increasing antennas or coil spacing because the field will be able to penetrate deeper into subsurface and will therefore be affected by a greater volume of conductive material. Form a curve uh, with one or more inflection point, for example, denote layer boundaries. The curve apparent uh, conductivity versus antenna spacing will typically have one or more uh, inflection points. These inflection points denotes or uh, tells us the layer boundaries in the subsurface. The inflection point occur because the conductivity of the subsurface changes at layer boundaries. Can be a model using master curve or inversion techniques. So this is similar like what we have learned in the VES. So the data from an electromagnetic profiling survey can be modeled using master curve and or inversion techniques. Master curve are empirical curve that relate the apparent conductivity to the antenna spacing for different type of subsurface material. Uh, inversion technique are uh, mathematical technique that are used to estimate conductivity uh, structures of the subsurface from data collected from uh, an electromagnetic profiling survey. So, but the disadvantages of using master curve is it only can uh, proceed up to three, two to three uh, layers of the subsurface. Beyond than that, it is very difficult to uh, to do the uh, model using the master curve. So now let's take a look on the EM profiling. So it consists of making measurement at many different places with the distance between the TX and RX fixed. So in electroprofiling, the TX and receiver coils are fixed in distance. This is done by moving the TX and RX coil along together in a line or a grid lines. So the distance between the TX and RX coil is typically increased in increment of a few meter to see the changes of the anomaly. Most common type also known as uh, moving lawn. So it's also known as mo uh, moving lawn because the TX and RX coil are moved along the ground su uh, surface in a similar way uh, to a lawn mower like this uh, example. So data collected across the area of interest along a single line or set of grid line, grid line data. So the data collected from electromagnetic profiling survey can be collected along a single line or a set of grid line. So if the data is collected along a single line, it can be plotted as apparent conductivity versus distance <coughs> uh, along the line. If the data is collected along a set of grid line, it can be plotted uh, as a contour map of uh, apparent conductivity. Okay, this figure is an example uh, of EM profiling. So it has a fixed distance of transmitter and receiver and it just uh, do the lawn mower thing. So it's moving the lawn from this point to another point. So this is the position one where we have a conductive uh, materials uh, vertical way. So at these positions, <clears throat> the data is appear to be like this way. So it, it, it's almost uh, zero uh, anomaly. So when the conductor ataupun uh, when uh, the positions of the transmitter and receiver uh, or the conductor is in the middle of the transmitter and receiver, it has the highest anomaly. It shows you negative anomaly because it's again, if you can see here, the directions of the transmitters and connector is again each other. So that's why it goes uh, negative uh, value. And at the position 3, it turns back to uh, positive because of uh, the directions of uh, conductors <coughs> field and also transmitter field is actually aligned. So that's why it goes upward. So position 1, position 2 and position 3 is shown in this graph. Finally, the EM tomography is a survey combining sounding and profiling techniques to create a two-dimensional image of the electrical conductivity of the subsurface. 
The tomography image uh, shows uh, the electrical conductivity of the subsurface at different depth. The electrical conductivity is a measure of how well a material conducts uh, electrical uh, electricity. Material with high electrical conductivity will allow the electromagnetic field to penetrate more and more deeply, while material with low electrical conductivity will attenuate the electromagnetic field more quickly. The picture below shows the tomography survey of EM at Tok Bali Kelantan to identify the saltwater intrusions. About 10 stations of EM uh, field has been conducted. If you can see the black uh, datum points uh, across the 1 km line and go downward over here. So we can delineate the, uh, the, the layer of saltwater <coughs> from the interpolations of this uh, 1D of soundings and profilings by looking at which area has the higher conductivity. Since the hot layers has the high conductivity, we know that this layer is actually representing the salt water intrusions layer. So this are an example of EM land survey uh, of fixed distance of dipole source of TX and RX. For the dipole measurement, uh, the TX and RX is positioned horizontally and fixed where RX is always on the front. This activity is profiling survey scheme where it only detects the presence of anomaly, for example, on the first pictures without doing detailed interpretation analysis, like the depth of the target, the size of the target, and so on. So basically, uh, profiling survey scheme is more like uh, to detect rather than uh, analyze the depth of target or the size of uh, the target. So this is an example of airborne survey. So they use either chopper or even the flight or the aircraft itself. For example, for this uh, chopper or helicopter, you uh, use uh, to have this kind of arrangements where it has the receiver at the outer loop and transmitter at the inner loop. So it's just doing the sounding survey where it detects, uh, try to detect the, uh, the anomaly. So it covers a very big area. Uh, it can use to cover a very big area so as goes to the aircraft. So for the aircraft, the transmitter is always on the front while the receiver is at the back. And the application is almost similar to the chopper and to the land survey but it goes uh, uh, airborne way and <clears throat> it can cover a very big area in very short time. However, this application is a bit more expensive compared to the uh, land survey. The electromagnetic methods also can be conducted in marine or shipboard survey. We can use the vessels. So the application is almost similar like ocean bottom cables in, uh, of the seismic uh, seismic survey where we are going to plant all the receiver at a certain grid or on the sea subsea or sea floor and we run the transmitter towed by the uh, vessels from uh, one point to another point so that we can have the subsurface image or uh, the conductivity of the subsurface or in the uh, in the oceans or marine so now we move into the next part of electromagnetic method which is the type of survey EM. So the EM survey method can be classified or can be conducted into different type of survey. And the well known, the most well known uh, three type of uh, EM survey method known as dipole source, transient electromagnetic uh, survey, magnetotelluric survey, ground penetrating radar, and also CSEM, and many more. CSEM stands for Control Source Electromagnetic uh, Field Acquisition, which is commonly uh, used in the uh, marine acquisitions. Now, let's have a look on the dipole source first. So, uh, this dipole source, also known as 2-coil CW or sling grind system, a dipole source is a type of electromagnetic source that consists of two coils that are connected by a cable. The coils are typically placed close together and the cable carries a reference signal. The reference signal is used to compensate uh, for the effects of the primary field, which is uh, the electromagnetic field generated by the transmitted coil. 
the TS and RX are coil linked by a cable which carries a reference signal in order to compensate the effect of the primary field. The reference field, uh, the reference signals <coughs> is typically a sine wave that is generated by the transmitter coil. The reference signal is carried by a, is carried by the cable to the receiver coil. The receiver coil measures the difference between the receiver signals and the secondary field. The secondary field is then uh, is the electromagnetic that is generated by the subsurface in response to the primary fields. By this means, <coughs> the system uh, subsequently uh, responds only to the secondary field by compensating uh, for the effect of the primary field. The dipole source system can be made uh, to respond only to the secondary field. So this is useful because the secondary field are generated by the subsurface and, and they can be used to map the electrical conductivity of the subsurface. So the dipole system is a simple and effective way to generate electromagnetic field for EM method. So the system is relatively in, inexpensive and easy to use and it can be used to map uh, a variety of subsurface features. So the dipole source is typically like profiling survey scheme where they have a fixed distance uh, between the receiver coil and also the transmitter coil. So the receiver coil is always on the front uh, so that it will detect uh, the anomaly much faster. So they will carry uh, this equipment like a lawn mower from one point to another in a straight line, for example like this survey. In the presence of anomaly, like having subsurface vertical connectors over here, the response of the anomaly will be uh, like this one. Lah. And this figure is actually already been explained before. If you remember, please refer to the previous slides if you want to know more uh, explanations. But uh, the most interesting at the, 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 the questions that you should ask from this figure is why the anomaly is negative. So why the anomaly is negative is because the induced uh, secondary uh, EM field produced by the conductor after being induced from the uh, primary field is actually against the directions of the primary electromagnetic field. So that's why they say secondary field opposed the primary. So that's why it goes negative. It's again and of course it will become uh, neg negative. So because it's actually again the direction of primary electromagnetic field produced by the TX coil so therefore it has a negative uh, and anomaly another type of dipole source is C CSEM or known as control source electromagnetic survey so CSEM survey are a type of geophysical survey that use electromagnetic field to map the electrical conductivity of the subsurface CSEM is commonly used in marine survey where the receiver is planted uh, permanently on the uh, subsea or the seafloor and over the times a vessel uh, towing the EM source is passing through the receiver to collect the data for, for the survey. So this survey is just like uh, ocean bottom cable like I explained before. They plant it in, in a grid form or in, in line form and then uh, the source uh, that been towed by the vessels will pass in through them and we collect the data. Uh, and then after uh, after a few uh, days, they come again so that we can have a, a kind of 4D survey in, in, in time uh, domain. So CSEM survey are typically conducted in two dimensional, but they also can be conducted in three dimensionals uh, or, or four dimensions. In CSEM survey, uh, a transmitter coil is used to generate an electromagnetic field. The electromagnetic field propagates through the subsurface and is measured by a receiver coil. The data collected from the survey is then used to create a top tomographic image of the subsurface. The tomographic image uh, shows uh, the electrical conductivity of the subsurface at different depths. The electrical conductivity is a measure of how well a material conducts electricity. Uh, material with high electric conductivity will allow the electromagnetic field to penetrate more deeply we, while material with low electrical conductivity will uh, attenuate uh, the electromagnetic field more uh, quickly. Uh, in, in, in marine environment, the CSEM uh, data is always integrated with seismic uh, data uh, to identify the subsurface anomaly like over here. Most commonly, the sandstone uh, hydrocarbon field uh, reservoir. 
Okay, and HC field reservoir has high resistivity layer and will give a good 3D uh, representation when it integrated with the seismic line, uh, seismic uh, ataupun cube uh, like here. Sometimes uh, seismic is unable to give a direct hydrocarbon indicator mainly due to the resolution, very poor resolutions. However, uh, with the integration with CSEM, it will help to build the confidence on the targeted area. For example, like this one. So this one, it has uh, the, the red color, which is high high resistivity layer uh, that uh, shows us or uh, give us information of uh, the accumulation of uh, hydrocarbon. The next method of electromagnetic method is magnetotelluric or MT method. So the magnetotelluric MT method is a passive electromagnetic EM electro exploration method that measure orthogonal components of the electric and magnetic fields on the Earth's surface. The source field is naturally generated by variations of Earth's magnetic field which provide a wide and continuous spectrum of EM field wave. This field induce current into the Earth, which are measured at the surface and contain information about the subsurface resistivity structures. The empty method re uh, relies on naturally occurring electromagnetic field. The type of natural source depends on the frequency of the EM field. Two types of natural electromagnetic field generated on Earth are number one is lightning and its reactions towards ionosphere. And second is the solar activity, which is the reactions of solar winds towards the magnetosphere or the Earth's magnetic field. At frequency higher than 1 Hz, the most significant source is lightning, which is a discharge near the equatorial regions of the Earth. The EM field generated by lightning events, otherwise known as ferric, propagates in a waveguide <coughs> between the Earth's surface and the ionosphere, which is highly conductive. The fields travel far distance as plane wave. The magnetosphere, which is caused by the interactions between the Earth's magnetic fields and solar wind, generated EM field at frequency less than 1 Hz. Variations in the density, velocity and intensity of the solar wind produce a time varying EM field. Together with lightning and solar activities, this natural source provide the primary EM field to excite the Earth. As mentioned before, empty method consists of five components. There are three orthogonal sensors to measure magnetic components at three different axes, HZ, HY, and also HX. Another two components are two horizontal orthogonal grounded dipole that is measuring the electrical components. The basic arrangement is shown in, the fig in this figure. All five parameters are measured simultaneously as a function of frequency by measuring the change in magnetic H and electrical E fields over a range of frequencies, an apparent resistivity curve can be produced, like this one. The lower the frequency, the greater is the depth of penetrations like what we have learned before in seismic method. Empty method can plant permanently to ground or to the subsea in bracket sea floor and continuous reading is measured passively when it's detected the natural occurring electromagnetic field. Current technology also built in CSEM sensor inside the empty unit to enhance and to calibrate between active and passive method. This is, this is very helpful especially to synchronize the data especially for the hydrocarbon uh, exploration purpose. So now let's take a look on the next electromagnetic methods which is transient electromagnetics which is known as TEM. So transient electromagnetic method is a common electromagnetic method conducted not just on land but many areas such as airborne, shipborne due to its functionality and practicality. So this method is also quite well known and is on high demands by industry due to its uh, easy measurements, uh, cheap and also uh, penetrate deeper. Similar with conventional electromagnetic method, it has transmitter loop that located at outside and receiver loop that is located uh, inside, meaning that TX has larger loop than RX. So current uh, will flow in the transmitter loop as shown in graph A 
and this will allow the primary magnetic electromagnetic field to go above and below the subsurface. The current will shut off at some times after more or less uh, one second or more to let the electromagnetic field to collapse. If there is any presence of conductive, uh, conductive layers or materials or bodies, the secondary magnetic field will be detected due to the induced eddy current in the ground, then is measured by the middle receiver coil during off time as shown in graph C. The way the secondary field is decaying will tell us how good is the conductivity of the subsurface. Since the primary field is totally off or collapsed during the measurement of secondary field, the data obtained is clearly separated because we only take the secondary fields during the off time. So these are the unit of TEM that I believe you are already aware since we already use it during the geophysics pre-camp. So no need for me to list out all the uh, equipments of uh, TEMs. However, our unit is quite special where our equipment is a pro unit. The pro unit has many advantages compared to the common uh, unit where we can adjust the size one of it is we can adjust the size of the transmitter loop as low as 20 meters times 20 meters to 100 meters to 100 meters TX loop. However, the current demand is always uh, either 40 meters times 40 meters or 100 meters times 100 meters TX loops. We have to bear in mind that the bigger the loops, the better the depth of penetrations, but it depends on the conductivity of the subsurface and also the locations of the conductive materials. Based on my experience conducting different size of TX loop, 20 meters times 20 meters TX loops normally can penetrate down to 100 to 200 meters downward. 40 meters times 40 meters TX loop can, can penetrate down to 200 to 400 meters. Uh, 100 meter TX loop can go as deep as more than 4, 400 meters. However, it depends on the target. If the target is shallow, then better just use 20 meter times 20 meter TX loops. A bit, uh, a bit cheaper, small size, easy to handle and less time consuming. The data we obtain from TEM after acquisition is in inverse 1D modeling of apparent resistivity times versus depth graph. If we notice, the graph looks similar like what we have been presented for vertical electrical sounding, VES result. And yes, the outcome is exactly the same. What makes them different is in terms of uh, time consuming for acquisitions where we can have tens of 1D models like this for TEM instead of two or three for VES. The machine of TM can automatically do the inversion straight away compared to VES. However, monitoring is a must to ensure the accuracy of the observed data and also measured data. If we conducting a series of 1D model in a straight line, we can actually produce a 2D apparent resistivity profile or tomography. And if we have a grid or scattered 1D modeling over an area, we can generate a 3D model of subsurface resistivity model where we can establish a slice resistivity map at the depth where we, where we want to see in details. So this is why recently the application of TEM is quite popular because it can cover a big area in short period of time and can have a direct interpretations and direct processing. This is an example of transient electromagnetic application in hydrocarbon explorations. The term MTEM uh, represents the multi transient electromagnetic data to show the application of a series of TEM acquisitions uh, or lines to, pro to produce uh, an apparent tomography resistivity profile as shown here. The correlation with seismic shows that the detections of several layers that conformable with the seismic horizons and layers particularly on the target's uh, anticline structure over here. The, the TEM data give a very good additional information of hydrocarbon uh, accumulations by showing high resistivity layers at the target zone which increase the confidence. The issue of uh, destructive 
well logging methods for resistivity logging actually can be solved by proposing the DEM method where it can show you the same similar outcomes or, uh, or, or the same output. So these are the list of conductive material and its physical relative permittivity and radar velocity. And since the outcome is similar to resistivity, we, we also can expect or use what we uh, has been proposed by the Telford and by, by, by Telford and Gelder 1990 for reference or as reference. And please ensure that the resistivity range is for reference only and cannot be directly interpreted without geological knowledge of the study area beforehand. We also need to be aware with the factor that affect the resistivity of the subsurface like the presence of water in the pore space, the pore geometry, the pore space geometry itself, uh, temperatures, uh, the presence of clay, salinity and uh, minerals and many more. So that is why uh, the range of resistivity and conductivity of particular rocks uh, or mineral is varied and has a big range of uh, value. So the advantages of this technique is actually already been explained or elaborated uh, during the slides previous, the previous slides. However, we can see in overall or general uh, overviews on the advantages or disadvantages of this method. The advantages of this technique is of course, number one, is non-destructive compared to another method, especially resistivity and seismic method that require planting electrodes and geophones on the grounds. Faster, sur uh, faster survey and processing sequence, like I mentioned earlier, we can have tens of stations but still depend on the size and also condition of the study area plus the weather. For example, if we have 100 meters times 100 meters size of the X loops, then we need uh, we require to have uh, some times. But and and if we uh, conduct uh, the uh, 100 meters times 100 meters in a jungle area, a very high vegetation area, so we're going to have some uh, problem and require some times to do it. Whether also, uh, raining season, we try to avoid it because of the safety issue. And thirdly, we uh, practically can be applied on the land and airborne, seaborne. So it's very practical uh, at every uh, every situations. And it is a downhole measurement with horizontal layout on the surface. And number five, the survey also considered cheaper compared to resistivity and seismic method. Okay, depends on the size again lah, because uh, we deal with uh, the size, the times and also uh, the safety issue. The drawback is actually depends. Number one, uh, fixed depth of investigation. So fixed depth of investigation, especially when you have a conductive layer, right a few centimeters from surface. So all the EMF or electromagnetic field force will accumulate it, okay, will be absorbed by this conductive uh, layer or materials on the shallow surface. Uh, and it will uh, limit the penetrations at the deeper part, if you remember the skin depth. And secondly, the interpretation skill is not really a big issue, even though it's said uh, here, uh, if you have many experience handling and processing uh, the, the, the EM data. And that's all for this topic. So all in all, I believe you have uh, you you should be able to explain the fundamental of EM method. And secondly, you can process and inter interpret the EM method. Especially we already uh, conducted uh, the geophysic field camp, and also we do uh, uh, laboratory experiment and also lab exercise uh, previously. I really hope that you enjoy this lecture and uh, I really uh, want to thank you for your participation during this semester because this is uh, the last or the final uh, lecture of this non seismic method class. I wish you all the best in your final exam and really hope that we can meet again uh, in the future. Thank you so much and have a good day ahead.